These markets are blowing up faster than I had anticipated. I was looking forward to 2024 being relatively bumpy until we get to the end of the year around elections, but we are seeing things absolutely blow up. This everything bubble is spreading worldwide. And it's only a matter of time until it hits BTC, Ethereum and the altcoins again after we've already seen them pump up uh, a couple of hundred percent in the case of Bitcoin and ETH. But this time we've seen one of the biggest new all-time highs in history. One of the biggest. This is even bigger than the Great Depression from 1929 into the 1950s for the US. Japan hit a new all-time high, 34-year high on their stock market. Now, I hear you at the other end. There are so many questions. This is getting absolutely crazy in terms of what's going on in the market compared to the economy and what you're seeing day to day. What I see day to day, homeless people around I would want to say almost everywhere, but it is getting a little bit crazy out there, especially with the cost of living. Now, we have to remember what we trade. Here we are at your home of macro cycle analysis. We trade the markets. We're not trading the economy. We are trading the markets and they continue to go up as this bubble blows up. The consequences from this bubble, I suspect, will be a major, major collapse. I don't think it's coming yet. I think there's still a little more time as we have covered many times before with our 18.6 year cycle, which has over 200 years of history backing it up from the US and around 300 years of history from the UK. So there is a lot going on here in these markets as even the S&P hit a new fresh high. Now, I've got a lot to get through. I'm very, very excited. Plenty of charts, data, the facts to have a look at today, like and subscribe if you are new here on your channel. As I said, this is your home of macro cycle analysis, covering Bitcoin, cryptos, and something that I don't see many other people do, if any, the real estate market, and of course, the stock markets as well. I'm not saying that no one does it, but this is where we are. We're here at your home of macro cycle analysis. Links in the top of the video description. Join our premium community, trading short-term, setting up their long-term plans as well for their long-term freedom. Link is in the top of the video description. All right, guys, let's hit it off with the headlines and then we get into the charts. Japan's Nikkei crosses 39,000 points. Essentially, it's a new all-time high after 34 years. Yes, they've done printing. Yes, they've done everything they can to get the economy going. It's essentially what's been going on around the world. The main thing I continue to focus on is how are you trading these markets? How are you making money from it? Even if the economy is not looking good as a comment here from the UK, I don't live in the UK, that's true. Things are terrible, shops are closing, but someone else is seeing the opposite. The same or very similar things are going on all around the world. You let me know in the comments section, I've heard it from the UK, I definitely see it in the US. It happens here in Australia, Canada, you name it. Things aren't looking as good in the economy, but the markets are going up. So this is part of the symptom of the collapse to come. So as we move on to the real estate cycle, the big move to the upside, it seems like we're basically basically at the beginning of that and, it, and in some cases had started in 2023 with those lows out of the market for the S&P 500. We had our October low, we had our October 2022 low, we had the lows for the real estate markets as well. Here is your ETF, your home builders ETF in the US, which continues up. And I also saw a comment of some other people shorting this market. I suspect the shorters are going to get their limbs ripped the F off themselves by trying to short mega, mega bull market bubbles. That time will come. It's almost akin to the time that Michael Burry was trying to short the market. If you remember the big movie, The Big Short from the uh, 2008 crash, you had the markets coming down, but he was trying to short the market all the way up in this move to the upside. It's very fortunate for him that he was using other people's money. And so he was able to stay in the game and last until this collapse comes. Most of us aren't that fortunate where we're using other people's money to keep throwing more and more money in as you're trying to short this market to the upside. Eventually, most are going to get squeezed out, which typically is part of that symptom for that blow off move to the upside. But the thing is, these moves can last a lot longer, which is why we have the 
quote that we refer back to, irrational markets, they can stay irrational longer than we can remain solvent. And eventually you'll be right, you'll get that collapse. But it doesn't seem like it's time yet as we just start to get into these new fresh highs, starting from around December of 2023, new all time highs for many markets. And of course, for Japan, just today hitting a new fresh all time high. So that's the news on Japan, huge, huge news, 34 years. And in terms of the uh, longest one for the US, you had the Dow Jones here going back to the Great Depression. This is on a annual chart, one year. These, each bar is one year. There is your peak in 1929, 25 years until it got into a new fresh all-time high, going through the Great Depression. Now you can see how the economy and how people were living were a completely different looking at the markets themselves. You had a mega collapse here very, very quickly. It was impoverished times, World War II, and the market still reached a new fresh all-time high in 25 years. But you look over at Japan, I, I would argue that they haven't lived in the same conditions as what happened in the US and around the world in the 1930s. It hasn't, hasn't been anywhere near as bad, but their stock market has been down and only just hit a new all-time high after 34 years. So you can start to see how things are different. You're better off trading the charts if you're trying to make money as opposed to trying to trade uh, shops closing down in the street and people living in tents. If you could short that as it's a bad thing for the economy, go right ahead. You'd be very, very rich. But unfortunately, what I su suspect you're here doing is trying to trade the markets. So that's Japan. I've uh, also mentioned here on Twitter, all-time highs. S&P 500 hit a new all-time high. Uh, the Nasdaq's very, very close again. Dow Jones, I've got more to get onto that with the S&P as we talked about in yesterday's video, the market grinding higher with a bit of that rotation going on between growth stocks and defensive sectors. And then you see this market pump up. I uh, just talked about that in yesterday's video before we got that all-time high. Germany, again, yesterday in a technical recession, hitting new all-time highs. France, new all-time highs. Australia, in the midst of another new all-time high, just hit one recently in the last few weeks. India, new all-time highs. Some of the biggest economies in the world are hitting all-time highs. And yes, things that are going on in the streets are different. So onto the stock markets and of course then cryptos. Bitcoin, Ethereum hitting fresh highs again against its Bitcoin value. We're looking at the stock market here, lots and lots of green all over the shop. And of course the big one is Nvidia hitting another fresh all-time high. It brings itself up to the fourth largest company by market cap in the world, just behind Microsoft, Apple, and Saudi Aramco. To anyone out there, including myself, this does not look sustainable. But again, we've got to remember we're in a macro bull market. We're in a bubble, which is a symptom of a collapse. So these can go on longer. Again, to remember, can, uh, the markets can remain irrational longer than we can remain solvent. And those folks who have tried to continue shorting this market on the way up are basically getting their asses handed to them. And I suspect as part of the move to the upside, many of us might be familiar with a short squeeze. So you've got people trying to short the market, be that hero to say that I sold the top and then they get absolutely blown out of the water. Their, their accounts would be decimated trying to short this because of the market being closed. And then on the earnings report, you can see it jump up here and open. That's what this side is here on the left, open at a new all time high. And so that gap between where the market closed and where it opened was roughly 11%. So depending on where their stops were placed to hopefully prevent major losses, the majority of say shorter term traders, if they are in fact short term traders, would be destroyed on an open like that. So we've looked at a lot of charts. Now let's look at something to do with charts and the economy. Real gross domestic income, another misinterpreted economic indicator. So a great one here by Sentiment Trader yet again. So the real gross domestic income, you can see the chart here is um, going up, but it is a lagging indicator. Uh, the main thing that we want to pull from this is that we're looking at the 12 month percentage rate of change is going down. And typically what you'll see on social media, which we're all a part of here, is that people will cop copy and paste this particular chart and then tell you that the market is collapsing. Everything is going down because real gross domestic income is going down. Now, when you take a look at the data going back through history, all the way back to the uh, late 1940s, 
it's not necessarily the case that the market has to collapse from this point and you definitely get a recession, even though what they've done, what you'll see say on X or on YouTube, just trying to clear up the misinformation out there, is that when this market does go down into that negative territory, you almost always get a recession, but it's about the timing. And we've talked about this for years and years on the channel now. We're looking at the bottoms here in June of 2022, October 2022, uh, looking back now, you can go back on the videos on the channel. As I said, if I have an editor, I'll tell, him, tell them to go and put this into the video. But nonetheless, this is what it is here. We're looking at these being uh, the bottoms out of the COVID low, looking for a market rise from that point. Now, everyone's talking about the economy crashing, but we're talking about the timing of things, the timing of when this should happen. And we're looking at this being the timing here. Roughly the peak around there and then the rollover. It doesn't just peak in 2026 and then collapse like that. It could, but we're not saying that that's what has to happen. We're looking for some sort of signs that the market's getting weaker and then starts to roll over like what's happened in the past. You see a peak and then another test of the top. Maybe it grinds around, quick drop to the downside, comes back, tests the underside of the previous support, which then becomes resistance. And then as the fear increases, this could be six months, 12 months time of how long this is taking to play out. Then you start to get the accelerated move to the downside. So it's, it's about timing uh, in these markets when you're seeing these tops come in. And then, of course, using those indicators to identify when the, uh, the breakdown points are, as I've also shown you guys uh, when it came to Solana as an example in the previous altcoin bull market and subsequent bear market. So onto the data here, hitting that like button. Uh, we're looking at the data from this particular real gross domestic income. So not to bore you with too many numbers, looking at the amount of signals that have popped up, uh, the times where you can see a red is when the signal came up 12 months later, there was a negative, uh, negative reading on the stock market. Now you can see from the particular data, it's been positive more often than red, and there have been very significant periods, in this case, 2002, 2008, that were red after this indicator came through. And so what a lot of them do is they just refer back to 2002 and 2008 when they post this particular type of data, this economic data here, saying that it happened in 2008, it happened in 2002, it's gonna happen again this year. They forget that in 2009 it didn't happen, the market was recovering. 2020, the market recovered very, very quickly. And this time around, it seems like it might be on the way up again before we do get a collapse uh, as we've been looking at from the 18.6 year cycle. So I can get through this again in a future video, but I think we talked about that long enough to understand that sometimes there is misinformation out there uh, uh, surrounding economic data. In this case, looking at real, uh, real gross domestic income. The S&P 500, new fresh all-time high, up roughly 6% from the previous old all-time high. So that's how far it's gone above the old all-time high. We're about 23% higher than the October low. This was a very, very fearful uh, part of the market as it collapsed from July. I mean, it was a healthy correction down from July into that October low. It's been about 120 days or 79 trading days to this peak so far. And as we said in yesterday's video, the corrections may only be short-lived as we grind up in this bull market, while many are still trying to short the living hell out of the market and it keeps going up, they just keep getting exited from their positions or they keep trying to add to the position, which then causes even more upside pressure when they get stopped out. So basically like a big short squeeze that could take a long, long time. We've seen that through each of the cycles. So I think now isn't the time to be getting fearful about the markets in all time high territory with a recession just around the corner. As we've covered many times before, the UK and Germany have seen recessions in the last couple of years, technical recessions that is yet their markets have hit new fresh all-time highs. So that's the S&P 500 continuing to grind up after those small rotations here, a few percent, and then pushing to fresh prices again. The NASDAQ, similar sort of thing here, a 4% correction. It's a couple of points away now from another all-time high. The Dow Jones also pressed to a new fresh all-time high. It's up 6% from its old all-time high. And I suspect this is going to continue to fuel the fire of this everything bubble for BTC, for ETH, for the altcoins. You're seeing a lot more uh, risk coming into these markets as they continue to grind higher with uh, shallower and shallower retracements. 
Now, the uh, Home Builders ETF, as I, I showed earlier in the video, is up 16%. Essentially, we're looking at uh, home builders or a lot of home builders in this case with the ETF in the US and is the market showing positive signs? They're still expecting more profits to come. We will be waiting to see when this rolls over or starts to show some signs of getting a little bit weaker. But for now, things are still up and I suspect people who are shorting this market as well are going to get wrecked. I mean, it's just part of the game here. Trying to short a bull market is a very risky game to play. You might get a few little wins along the way, but the macro the overall trend is up. And as they say, the trend is your friend until it bends at the end. I hope you like that one. The Japan market up 34 year high. And just to quickly cover the, the, the DAX. So this is in Germany, new all time high. Look at that blow up to another fresh all time high. It's roughly 5% up from its previous old all time high. France up 4% from its previous old all time high back in April of 2023, just broke through its macro, one of, I would say, uh, macro 50% levels, looking at this entire range projected from the recent low in October, getting through that level. And I suspect we're probably gonna go somewhere around that 8,700-ish points. And on to India, our big emerging market. Again, fresh all-time highs, just pipped it by a couple of points there. So we're still hitting fresh tops at that point. And quick one for the Aussies here, XJO is pushing. Again, it's in fresh high territory. Not a new all-time high yet, but it was a new all-time high if we look back to uh, 2022 at these peaks here. So to pull ourselves away from the everything bubble going on in traditional markets, in real estate, let's dive into Bitcoin, ETH, and some of these uh, cryptos which are all bubbling up. So I've got something big to talk about when it comes to these altcoins as well, looking at their market caps going from one to 100 and then to the very small micro caps. We can drop it all the way back to 1000 here. So let's kick it off with BTC. It's a percent down. Nothing much has been going on the last eight days. We have just been grinding at these prices, but I want to mention a, a quick post here from my good friend, Eric Crown, looking at this particular cycle, Bitcoin at its closest level, to, uh, closest to its all time, prior all time highs, pre halving than ever before by a decent margin. Essentially, the price of where Bitcoin is going back to the all time high is roughly about 29%. And in previous cycles, it has been a lot further away from its all time high. Does that mean we're going to have a bigger cycle this time? Potentially. We don't know. I don't know. I'm not trying to say that I do know. What I think and what I've said before is I don't think we'll get the same sort of repeat in that Bitcoin cycle where we saw Bitcoin go from 3K to roughly 70K, so over a 20 or a 22X. If that was to happen, Bitcoin would have to hit roughly $342,000 in this cycle. But could it go close? Could we get the 100, the 150K this time? I mean, at this pace, at this speed, sure but there will be corrections along the way. What we'd probably want to see if this gets to an all time high sooner than in previous cycles is at least for it to chill out above that high and consolidate like what's happened with the stock markets as well. Now, the reason for that is we have had some pretty significant moves to the upside from October at uh, 25K now at 51. So basically just over hundred percent move in that period, but not to forget, this entire period, if you go back to 2023, jumping into this range of 25 to 32K, we were there from March until breaking out in October. So about a seven month reaccumulation level above the previous accumulation bottom. We were looking at the lows here for June, suspecting that, that the price wasn't going to go much further. As you can review from the videos back in 2022, it did go a little bit further down to 15 and a half at the time. I mean, you get told that you're an absolute idiot. You missed the bottom. That's, you know, the bottom's coming at 10K. But really the difference between 17 and a half and 15 and a half doesn't really matter right now. Everyone wishes they would have got more back at these prices underneath 20K. So we did have uh, quite a period of time here, June until March, uh, roughly nine months of accumulation and then about seven months of reaccumulation. So I guess having a nice big move to the upside after these accumulation levels is warranted after those, um, yeah, after those reaccumulation levels, of course, but to keep going, we'll probably need some other reaccumulation. Even the previous cycle after it boomed for several months, very significant pullback. And then this was two months of it just grinding and grinding and obviously 
the uh, buyers, investors were buying up here roughly 29 to 30 ish thousand dollars. We had one final pump to the upside before everything came crumbling down. So just to be real with you, there is no signal yet for BTC. If you had to pick a side for a longer move, you'd have to say to the upside because, well, the trend is up on the weekly chart. We haven't seen any sort of significant breakdown of key levels. The key levels for a significant breakdown would be past the 50% level now. Uh, that's at about $38,000, $39,000. So the market would have to go below that on the macro sense. We'd also need to see breakdowns underneath the previous levels of support and resistance going back into the 40,000 region. So for now, market's been grinding around. Let's move on to Ethereum, which has been climbing and climbing and climbing 10 days up now against the Bitcoin value. And I've heard some of your comments saying that you don't know about Satoshi values. Satoshi values are basically just a denomination of Bitcoin's value. So if Ethereum is $3,000 and Bitcoin was $30,000, then Ethereum would be one tenth, meaning it would be 0.1. In this case, Ethereum is roughly 0.06. So it's roughly 6% of Bitcoin's value. That's as simple as, I guess I can explain it right now, but we look at the Satoshi value to give us an understanding of this, the relative strength of the altcoin, or if you don't consider Ethereum an altcoin, Ethereum against Bitcoin's value. And is it in a, a, a more a stronger position than Bitcoin is in? And right now it seems to be because it's going up against Bitcoin's value, which is showing up on the USD chart as well. It's had a very significant rise, up about 98% since the bottom in October. So a nice big strong move up here to, uh, you know, 29, 70, $3,000. The good news for ETH is that it's holding above the 50% level. And this is the bear market 50% level going from the top at 49 to the bottom at eight, $180. Holding out above this line is a good sign that hopefully we're consolidating at higher prices or at least for Ethereum, Ethereum holders who have packed their bags entirely. And the idea from here is that consolidation happens, another stair-stepping stone is placed, and then we start to test higher prices up around 35 to 3,600 US dollars. So here's a little hot tip on altcoins. So we're just looking at the bubbles here, the greens and the reds. I wanna keep it really nice and simple. Just looking at the risk in trading the top 100 versus the bottom 100 that's that's uh, recorded here. So the 900 to 1000 market cap altcoins. I've got it on the month here, but we can change it to the year in a moment. The main thing I wanna look at here are the returns that are possible in the top 100. You can see here, you're getting numbers, at least in this month that we've seen prices go up. And of course there's always changes. We've got a couple of hundred percent as being some of the biggest stuff here. Render, a nice little hundred percent there. Ajax, 180, Wild, 276. Let's drop it down to the bottom 100, so down near the 1,000, 900 to 1,000. You've got numbers like 100%, 100%, 200%. It's pretty similar, but you've got a lot more reds, so a lot more risk, but you're not getting the same return. You want to get better and bigger return. You've got bigger declines as well, 75%, just in the month. Now, let's have a look at the 100 to 200. You're starting to see slightly bigger returns here, 200%, a few more 200% really. And then if we move over to two to 300%, We've got to see some that are a lot bigger, 700, 200. So there are a couple more that are bigger here. Now the top 300 to 400, lots of greens bubbling all over the place. Again, still around the 100 and 200, but you've got a few more going on here. So what I'm saying is, I think the risk reward starts to wear out the lower down you go. There's usually like a sweet spot there and you may have found your own sweet spot. And it's gonna be different for everyone, just depending on what you choose to look at. But essentially, the further down you go, the bigger pumps and dumps, there's not necessarily going to be the bigger uh, upside potential because you can see here we're down at 800 to 900 and they're still getting the same sort of returns that the top 100 to 200 were getting. And so I think taking that extra risk might not be for everyone. And if you are looking for those altcoins that are going to give you those explosive gains, then maybe stick with a plan that is going to be suitable to you. Are you used to using centralized exchanges or decentralized exchanges? Are you able to get onto these airdrops quicker? Are you able 
to get onto the IDOs quicker? Can you, can you do all these sorts of things or do you not have the time to do that and you prefer to stick with altcoins that are on centralized exchanges or you have a little bit going on with decentralized exchanges or wallets that you can trade with? Because there are still opportunities in the top 200. I know many want to go for the stuff that is way down on the list, getting you the micro caps, but there's not always that uh, reward there and you've got a lot more risk because you've got a lot more crap down at those lower uh, lower market caps. So maybe you've got to throw out 10 different orders to maybe pick up one or two as opposed to the top, maybe you know, 100, 200, you don't always get the, the big, big pumps, but more of them are going to move to the upside than what you would see lower down on those market caps. Now there's always a flip side to that. I've got 100 to 200 top altcoins here. We're on an annual review here as well. So it's just about the time frame as well. You can see here, you've got massive returns. NOS, 22,000%. Pendle, 1,600%. Let's go down to the bottom 100. 1,800%, 200%, 200%. I mean, they've probably moved up from that point as well. So we go to five to 600. You can see 1,200. The big ones that, that are now potentially in that one to 200 area of the market caps may have come from those lower ones. So if that's the case, then it's about holding on. So I've given you a couple of ideas there. It's not always that simple of just tell us what it is and it's going to go up because you've got a lot more risk at the bottom end. And then it's about how long can you hold for and how uh, big of a drawdown can you take until the market goes back up in your favor. So a lot of these could be up hundreds of a percent crash 80% and then start to work their way higher again and give you that big, nice 20,000% return. So there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes. And I know it seems so easy online, which just get these altcoins, go get your 35X returns, but there is a lot more that goes on behind the scenes. Hopefully that's at least help you start to set up that plan. If you want to understand more, there's always TIA premium. There's a link in the top of the video description for that. But of course, there's always a lot of learning to do and you can always start for free on YouTube as well. Thanks again, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you at the next video. Until then, take care and peace out.